Hi everyone. Welcome. It's Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, so it's time for Stamping with Denise. I'm so glad to be back with you again. Um, I missed last week. I was just getting home from On Stage. That's the big um, event for demonstrators. It was in Houston, Texas. I'm going to tell you, it was humid. I wasn't expecting that much humidity in March, let me tell you. But anyway, I had a great time. I got to see the new catalog. There's some great new products in it. You're gonna love it. It's got a different layout. Um, so it'll take some getting used to in terms of where to find things in the catalog, but um, still it's chock full of great products. I saw the new end colors. And actually, when I change my view to my hands, I will show you little a little, um, you know, card I have with the, all the ink colors on it, okay? The, um, let me make sure I'm doing okay. Yep, I, hey, I got sound. Um, you know, we've got some things that are retiring that I'm sad to see go. We've got some things carrying over, which makes me happy. And there's several of the designer series papers that are co that are carrying over, which is kind of unusual for Stampin' Up, but um, it's good because they're favorites, and so we get to use them for another whole year. Um, I haven't completely been through my catalog. I don't have all the details, but um, I will tell you what I know as we go along here. So, we were together two weeks ago. If you recall, I made this. I ended up calling it a cross-cut card um, using our online exclusives for um, which is the Zinnia bundle. I don't remember the exact name of it, sorry. And it, I thought it, it's a layout I hadn't seen before and so I thought I'd give it a try and share with you. So if you would like to win the project we're going to do tonight Please share my video, comment, share down in the comments, and your name will be in the drawing to possibly win tonight's project. But this project's going to go to Doris Rogers. Doris shared my video, commented, and her name was drawn from those who told me that they had shared. So Doris, I will have to message you and get your address so I can get this card out to you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, if you can't share, I understand. Please give my video some hearts. Facebook likes the hearts better than the thumbs up. And so that just helps it be seen better in the algorithm. I appreciate that. Also, the um, if you're watching on YouTube, welcome. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. And once you do that, hit that little blue bell and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video, which is almost every Monday night. Okay, I'm going to switch to my, go ahead and switch to my hands and show you the new in colors. Okay, so this is the little color sheet that we got to do at On Stage. So these are our five new in colors. Peach Pie, Petunia Pop, Pretty in Pink, which is actually a returning favorite, Shy Shamrock, and Summer Splash. So, I think these are going to be some fun, bright, great colors to work with. I'm so glad we have a peach. Someone pointed out, it was funny, we have a number of pies. We have pecan pie, we're going to have peach pie, and then there's one other pie that we have. Oh, pumpkin pie. I'm kind of, so, um, yeah, we're getting quite a little pie collection there. So, anyway, um... That is what the new in colors look like. I hope you like them. The one, let me see if I can round up real quick the ones that are going away. Um, Tahitian Tide. Let's see. It's Tahitian Tide, Starry Sky, Orchid Oasis. Um, oh, it's Sweet Sorbet, but I don't have it here. And I think I think it's is it parakeet party boy i feel bad not knowing those all of those right off the top of my head hang on here let's look let's, let's 
Let's double check. Sorry, guys. Okay, yes. Okay, the in colors that are going away are Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Starry Sky, and Orchid Oasis. So it's these five here. Uh, my, my Sweet Sorbet is otherwise in use so anyway if you like these colors and I liked all these colors um, I hate to see them go but you know what it lo it leaves room for five new colors and we're getting five great new colors to um, take their places and I wanted to, I thought I'd show you real quick where is my Bermuda Bay I was going to show you it with these two colors here. Oh, I think Bermuda Bay's... Well, there's Coastal Cabana, so it's a little different than those. Both of those are. But anyway, okay. And, oh, I'll show you here. Here it is with Lost Lagoon. So they're different. But anyway, thought you'd like that sneak peek. Okay, so now the card I'm going to do tonight... I know it's been around for a while. I have never made one, though. I just did that this weekend. This is a pin, called a pinwheel card, okay? This was um, my first whole card I put together. I I played with a couple other pinwheels. I did um, made this one. Um, it's okay. It works. I did the, this pinwheel is the same as this one, except instead of putting it on white, I put it on this, I think this was Tahitian Tide. So, um, I think this would be really cute. I, I think it's better with the color behind it versus the white. What do you think? I think it pops better. And it just frames it better. Again, these were just my first time playing with them. But the math, the cutting is really simple. Okay. We are going to do a different one. In different colors and we are going to use this oh hold on we are going to use the countryside in designer series paper for this okay and this actually is carrying over so you're gonna to have to pick two contrasting uh, colors or patterns okay and if they're directional, you need to be careful to make sure they're all going the same direction, okay? Um, so I chose these two patterns. And uh, these, these squares are one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So simple, easy way to use up your scraps, okay? And that's exactly what I did on all of these cards. These were all scraps. I just cut the quarter inch squares. Okay, so you need three of those. You're going to use two pieces of cardstock. These are two and five eighths by two and five eighths. Okay, so they go, they are um, the base on which to build the card. Okay, and I saw a lot of people use their grid paper to kind of line up their um, pieces to get them even and I think that works pretty well so I'm going to do that same thing and I can tell that I am pretty evenly spaced now this technique works best if you use the Tombow glue and you know what I'm not even going to lift my paper up I'm just going to put it under here put some glue on it remember you don't need a ton of Tombow but there we go, there's our base. Okay. Now we are going to start with our pieces here. And the nice thing about the Tombow is it gives it just, I know a lot of people don't like Tombow, but um, it gives it a little bit, gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Now, when you're putting your first piece down, only put a little bit of adhesive in this corner. Okay, and you'll see why when we get to it. Now, 
Something I learned when I did this one, whoops, versus when I did my other ones is give it a little bit bigger border so that they meet closer to the center, okay? So, so there's that one. I've got it. Shoot, I keep moving it around, guys. And that little bit of glue there is okay because it is going to be... Um, covered up with this piece. Now, from here on out, you can certainly put glue over the entire piece. Okay, so I'm going to put this one right here. And see, I'm doing much better here getting them to meet in the center. Again, if you have paper that's directional like this is, you want to make sure you're paying attention to which direction your pattern's going. These are not so directional, so not as big an issue, okay? I know that's a little busy, but you know what? I think for a kid, for a child's birthday, I think that would be a great card. Um, let's be honest. Kids probably don't care so much about the card as they do what's in it, right? Or what it's attached to in either way. Okay, so, yeah, let's do that. I'm so glad this paper's staying. I do like it. So you're just going to keep going on around. And, you know, I'd seen these cards for a lot of time, a long time. Several months I've been seeing them. Maybe even longer. I don't know. And this was not how I thought they went together. I thought they each had a layer of the cardstock behind them. But this is even easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, this one here. So you can see I'm just putting some glue on the back. Again, a little dab will do you on this. Want this? I want to be able to, you know, I'm, I'm going to trim just a little bit off of that, and you'll see why in just a second. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Put that. And the fact I cut that little piece off isn't going to show, but I need to be able to get underneath this one to put this piece in. Okay. That's why you don't put adhesive over that whole area. Okay, so I found it was easiest if I just kind of pick it up. Lift out, up, get it in position, put it down. kind of blurry. Hold on. I'm trying to get it to focus here. Still, want, it doesn't want to focus. Okay, so then your first piece that you didn't completely adhere down, just put a little bit of, it, of Tombow glue on the back, okay, to hold that down. Now, your pinwheel's complete. That was pretty simple, really. Looks a lot more complicated, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to put the rest of the card together. So for my base, I am using a piece of Knight of Navy 8.5 by 5.5, cut in half, folded. Um, where's my bone folder at? Is, I thought, oh yeah, it is out. Okay, so we're going to do that. So. Okay, now we're going to... Instead of designer series paper, I'm going to use a piece of white cardstock, but I want to emboss this, okay? So I am going to use the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. This one is retiring. This one is retiring. So um, I'm sad to see that. So give me just a second. I got to bring my machine up here. Okay, we'll put this in here. 
I'm gonna, it doesn't make, I mean, for this pen, I don't think it makes that much difference if it's completely straight, but I don't want it as straight as possible. Remember, you want it to go through hinge first. If you forget what your sandwich is, let me set this here, because it'll go between these two plates, but it's, a, it's right here printed. So this is, this is a standard embossing folder, in which case I put it between the two clear plates, the two number threes. If I was using a thicker 3D embossing folder, I would just use this platform and the gray plate on the top, okay? Remember, you put it through hinge first so that any increase in pressure doesn't blow out your embossing folder. This is hard to, normally my cut, stamp and cut and emboss machine is at a station where I stand up to use it. It's kind of hard to use it sitting down. I don't get as much leverage. Okay, so there's that. That's beautiful. I'm going to be sad to see that one go. But I realized I haven't used it as much as I thought I was going to. Okay, so we're going to put that on... You know, it, this does have a top and a bottom because these flowers have this top here. So I want to make sure I get that right. So I'm going to get my stamp and seal. I am going to put this on here. Okay. My pinwheel is going to go on. You could put it with the points at... 12, 3, 6, and 9, but I kind of like it this way better, much like I have it on that card there. I just kind of like it. It looks a little more whimsical. I mean, it's just my thought. Okay, we are actually, believe it or not, going to make this a sympathy card. I pulled out the stamp that says, With Sincere Sympathy, from the Heartfelt Hexagon stamp set. Um... You know what I didn't do though is figure out what I was going to put it, stamp it on. I've got this little. Let me look see what I've got here. I've got this little stash of die cuts. These are just extra things that I have, and I have a. I'm going to use use this. This looks good. I think these are from the Countryside Corner dies. I think they just happen to be in my little stash there. So. I like having it there, so there's even, there's even retired stuff in there. This is Night and Navy ink. Um, so, one of these days I'll use all those. Let's put this on right here. Let's do with sincere sympathy. This might be a bit of an unconventional sympathy card, but I think it works, especially with these colors, with the, the dark navy. Um, okay, and I wanted to stamp this before I put my pinwheel on. Okay, so that's good, and that's good. And we're going to attach all of those with um, dimensionals. Yay, dimensionals. Oh, let's put this little piece here. I don't like to waste any of them. I think I'll put one in the center, too. When something's larger, I like to put one in the center to help um, hold in place. Now, I'm going to put this one down first. I'm going to put the sentiment down first, just so that I get proper placement for my pinwheel. Let's see if it's going to go kind of like that. We'll put this right here. There we go. Okay, put this right here. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Finishing touch. Much like I did here, I put an embellishment here. I pulled out of my drawer the iridescent pastel gems. These have calypso coral, coral balmy blue, and gold. 
Calypso Coral, Balmy Blue, and Gold. You can see I haven't used a lot of these colors. Used a lot of the Calypso Coral, but these are retiring. I did I did check before. So if you like these, I'm gonna get one of the big ones. I'm gonna put it right here in the center. Okay, there you are. Now the only other thing you need to do, because this is a dark base, you need to put a light colored panel on the inside so you can write with write your um, note to the recipient there we go okay and there we are there is a gorgeous sympathy card made using the pinwheel so this was um <coughs> Excuse me, kind of new to me. I like it. I'll probably do it again. Tell me what you think. And please, if you like my video, share it, comment, share it. And I might be sending this out to you next week. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great week. And I will see you next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Bye now.